Hello, my name is Isabella Sarit, and the title of my project is The Effect of Socioeconomic Disparities in Communities During Crises, particularly the COVID-19 pandemic. The research question I'll be focusing on is how slash why do times of stress affect poorer groups of people differently? I will be um, focusing on socioeconomic disparities for my project. I was born in Caracas, Venezuela, but my hometown is West of Indiana and there is a huge juxtaposition between these two. Venezuela was once a very wealthy country as they were a large supplier of oil, but has been in political turmoil for years, which is what drove my family and I to move, and is what my extended family is experiencing as they continue to live there. On the other hand, Westfield is an affluent city in the middle of Indiana. It's predominantly white, Christian, and pretty much has every typical adjective you could assign to a Midwestern suburb. I've struggled with adapting to these cultural differences and recognizing how these are both a part of my identity. However, after we were all sent home from campus in March, I found myself with an abundance of free time. Not knowing what exactly to do, I looked towards my community. I found a local free clinic, the Heart and Soul Free Clinic, where I could volunteer for a couple days a week, where I worked as an administrative aide and Spanish interpreter there, up until the beginning of the school year in August. While I had been there, I noticed a growth of new patients coming in. Oftentimes, these new patients had just lost their job due to the pandemic and had no other way of being seen by a healthcare professional and had no insurance. I met several families who had been impacted at a disproportionate manner by the pandemic and were struggling each day. The majority of these families belonged to minority groups within different ethnicities and races, sexual orientation, gender, education, and largely socioeconomic groups. Having interacted with these individuals, I got a personal taste at their experience and stories and got the motivation to learn more and start this project. The outline of this project is as follows. An introduction, which will highlight the purpose of this project, as well as provide some background information in the form of secondary data. Next, data collection will be explained through explaining how primary data was collected. Here, the use of a survey was implemented. Next, the survey results will be explained, and this acts as the primary data. Finally, the discussion of the presentation will present a conclusion and any further implications of the project. This project is important because it investigates the idea of stratification, which largely affects American communities. This is an important topic to address because it has grave and lasting effects on poor, already marginalized communities. My main purpose is to establish the gradient experienced along different socioeconomic groups, as it controls aspects such as housing, employment, education, insurance, etc. There are so many facets of one's life that are dependent on it, and there should be more resources, especially in a pandemic, to help cope with it. Additionally, I would like to collect data in the form of primary and secondary data to have a well-rounded project and really understand the effects of socioeconomic disparities on a pandemic. Harvard Medical School states that there is an abundant amount of evidence stating that lower socioeconomic groups have a lower life expectancy during the COVID-19 pandemic. They mention the huge effects that socioeconomic groups have on your life, housing, employment, insurance, etc. Additionally, they mention the correlation between people of color disproportionately being linked to low income slash socioeconomic groups. In 1919 and 2009, pandemic mortality rates were highest among those within the lowest socioeconomic groups. This study aims at reviewing pandemic protocols to place an emphasis on marginalized populations, particularly those in the low socioeconomic brackets, to give them the help they need to survive. This is a really good historical perspective in how socioeconomic groups have had a disparity in times of crisis for many, many years. Additionally, an article published by the American Psychology Association, or the APA, compares socioeconomic uh, statuses to psychological well-being before and during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was shown that individuals with a higher education experienced a higher increase in symptoms of depression and a greater decrease in overall life satisfaction. In the article, a quote from Dr. Ashwan Vasan, a doctor and public health professor, was shared. He said that people want to talk about this virus as an equal opportunity pathogen, but it's really not. It's going right to the fissures in our society. This shows that there is a clear inequity here that is drastically affecting the lives and well-beings of marginalized populations. 
primary data was collected through a survey. The survey was distributed to several groups of people, including family, friends, and free clinics. It was made clear to participants that this survey was fully anonymous and that the results collected were fully educational and were not going to be used in any other manner. The survey consisted of nine questions, including three de demographic questions and six situational questions, and a total of 11 responses were collected. The first question asked to indicate which ethnicity or race uh, the participant most closely identified with, including American Indian, Asian, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, or white ca or Caucasian. The second qu question asked which biological sex do the, does the participant most closely identify with? And the options were female, male, or they could also choose not to say. The third question asked about the participant's current income level, and the options were less than 20,000, 20,000 to 44,999, 45,000 to 74,999, 75,000 to 99,999, 100,000 to 149,999, and the last option was greater than 150,000. And the fourth question is our first situational question, which asked how um, the, the participant's income level has changed since the pandemic. And it asked them uh, to state if it has changed to indicate if their, their income has increased or decreased. The fifth question on the survey has asked if the participant has been unemployed due to the pandemic and they just mark yes or no. And the sixth question asks if during the pandemic they have had any trouble finding health care. And again, they just mark yes or no. The seventh question asks if because of their income level, are they more worried about contracting COVID-19? And they just have to mark yes or no. And then in the eighth question, they are asked if they have ever had COVID-19. And again, they just mark yes or no. And the very last question, which is number nine, they are asked if they have been able to get access easily to testing sites, masks, sanitizers, vaccine sites, pretty much anything that they would need to um, survive healthily during the pandemic. And they just have to mark yes or no. So after comparing the situational questions and sorting through the demographics, I found the following data to be the most pressing and important to my project. So 54.5% of survey participants indicated unemployment due to, due to the pandemic. 63.6% .6 of survey participants indicated a decrease in income during the pandemic. 63.6% .6 of survey participants indicated having trouble finding health care during the pandemic. 54.5% of survey participants indicated an increase of worry for co contracting COVID-19 due to their income. And 36.4% of survey participants indicated having trouble accessing testing sites, masks, sanitizers, vaccine sites, et cetera, during the pandemic. Through the use of both primary and secondary data, it is clear that the effects of socioeconomic disparities are felt in times of crisis, especially the COVID-19 pandemic by poorer and marginalized communities. Stratified societies disproportionately affect poorer communities. We have been studying the effects of this through the entire semester in Anthropology 205 readings, lectures, articles, etc. These effects can also be seen in my survey results and seen in real world examples such as the COVID-19 pandemic. In the survey results, it can be seen that a majority of the participants indicated unemployment due to the pandemic, an increase, a decrease in income, excuse me, during the pandemic, trouble finding health care, and an increase in worry for contracting COVID-19. And although a minority of the survey participants, a little over one third, stated having trouble accessing testing sites, masks, sanitizers, vaccine sites, etc. during the pandemic, this is still an alarming statistic that further exemplifies the inequities and stratification faced by poorer communities. In terms of future implications, there are two main things to focus on. Future studies and the betterment of the inequities faced by individuals experiencing socioeconomic disparities. For future studies, it is important to increase the number of participants involved in the study to have a statistically significant data set. Additionally, having a more diverse group of participants from a variety of demographics is important to have a well-rounded and, reflect and reflective project. 
Finally, including personal stories and, and interviews that would be beneficial to make a more impactful argument and employ more ethnographic research. To improve the socioeconomic disparities, um, the effects of them, especially in times of crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic, it is crucial to provide the opportunity for free health care everywhere. This is a human right that every single human being should have access to. There should also be income and unemployment aid that is sufficient to, to sustain a healthy lifestyle. Additionally, advertising of these resources should be made in multiple languages to make sure everyone can understand, and interpreters should be pre provided when necessary. In terms of future implications, there are two main things to focus on. Future studies and the betterment of the inequities faced by individuals experiencing socioeconomic disparities. For future studies, it is important to increase the number of participants involved in the study to have a statistically significant data set. Additionally, having a more diverse group of participants from a variety of demographics is important to have a well-rounded and, reflect and reflective project. Finally, including personal stories and, in and interviews that would be beneficial to make a more impactful argument and employ more ethnographic research. To improve the socioeconomic disparities, um, the effects of them, especially in times of crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic, it is crucial to provide the opportunity for free health care everywhere. This is a human right that every single human being should have access to. There should also be income and unemployment aid that is sufficient to sustain a healthy lifestyle. Additionally, advertising of these resources should be made in multiple languages to make sure everyone can understand, and interpreters should be pre provided when necessary.